Hey everybody, Tony D with a screenwriting tip. I haven't done a screenwriting tip in a while. Um, and uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, screenplays versus novels and the difference when writing each one. Now obviously there's a huge formatting issue. Um, screenplays are driven by the dialogue and um, novels are driven by the prose probably as a whole. I wouldn't say that novels are driven by the description, but that plays a major role. Whereas in the screenplay, the description has to be very taut and tight and minimal because it's really more, a screenplay is more of a plan to build the movie and you have to leave in, um, you know, openings for the creative people in the various departments on a movie to do different things. So, you know, once you describe, say, an alien, you don't really need to, unless that alien has a, you know, a particular trait or quirk or uh, thing that, that really is important to the, to the story, you, you can some, you want to leave an opening for the art department to maybe go in there or the guy who does makeup to do something cool with it, you know, do a cool texture for skin or whatever. Uh, whereas in a novel, you'd want to describe that. You definitely want to give people the sense and uh, the tone of, of things like that. The, the detail in a, in a novel is important, whereas the details in the screenplay you only want the important stuff. And I think as a guy who's written a ton of screenplays, more screenplays than I have novels, um, and more comic book stuff probably than either. Yeah. Uh, I, I found the screenplay format very useful in writing comics and in novels. And the way I use that is I still use the three act format. Uh, to sort of break up things. Now, you don't have to be as tied to the three-act structure as in a screenplay. A screenplay, it's more important that you stick with the structure because really, screenplays are all about structure. They're all about that structure so that people can uh, facilitate the movie so it runs a certain time so everybody's on board when the transformations happen because you're, you're talking about a team. You know, the, the plan is really for a team to build the movie. Whereas in a novel and in a, in a comic book, um, it's less important because in a comic book, your team would be the artists who are working on it. So you do have them to consider, but they require more description than say in a screenplay. And then in a novel, your, your only teammate is the reader and you need to give them all the mental tools to build the world in their head. And so you look at it that way. And the three, what the three act structure can do for you in a novel is it can give you um, the page number about when you should be thinking about moving on. You know, so if you've got a novel and I, I tend to like shorter novels, I, that's why I'm loving this new novella format for the Pineys at amazon.com. Um, so my piney stories are in the, uh, word document. It's, it's different on the, on the, the formats that changes with each format. But in my word document, my, my piney stories have to be a minimum of 80 pages and they tend to hover between 80 and 90. So each act I sort of roughly map out in my head as about 30 ish pages tend to be uh, slight, close to 30 on the first act, more like 40 in the second act, and more like 20 in the third, because in 20, in the third act, things tend to be moving moving at a pace. And, um, you know, the, the, the thing about that is my stuff tends to even be shorter than that. So, for instance, I just finished a draft of Piney's number six, and it came out to 73 pages, which is too short. So <clears throat> in the rewrite, when I go back to really sort of, you know, polish everything, I need to add seven pages. 
And that gives me an opportunity, and this is my particular writing style. I'm very, uh, very Spartan in my writing in terms of the descriptions and stuff. I generally am the guy who doesn't have a lot of descriptions because I did come out of screenwriting where too much description is discouraged. I, I, I constantly had producers saying, no, 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 it's too much, too much description. Get, get rid of this. The screenplay has to be shorter. And um, so that translated into why I write that way in a novel. So you can always add more. And I, I found that it's a good process to then go back and re-examine what I need to describe more of. Because at that point, when I have the entire piece finished, when I have the story from beginning to end, when I go back to do the polish and add this description, I can pick things that are more important to the conclusion, which I already know. You know, sometimes you're writing a story, you don't, you kind of know the conclusion, you kind of know where it's headed, but you don't really know until you've written it. And then you know exactly, really how it plays out. And then you can go back and as you're tweaking and polishing, there are opportunities to foreshadow the eventual end, to add things that are going to be, you know, in this case, in the novella series that are going to be the next novella or that, that, you know, to drop name, drop things that are going to come up again, uh, to, to recall things that happened in the past and to really sort of, uh, uh expand upon the important themes that your book has. And I think that's really important, but it's more important to analyze that after the story's done, because if you get caught up in analyzing that as you're writing, I think that's a trap because then people start second guessing themselves and they start altering the plot and the characters to fit the, the tone and the tone and the, the, uh, 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 the subtext rather than finishing it, reanalyzing it to discover the subtext and then sort of amplifying it in the polish, if you know what I mean. Now, these are very sort of heady subjects for people who are writing their first novel, um, or first novella. So, but my, but my, uh, emphasis here is that the three act structure can be a tool to help you write this, uh, book that you're going to write. So the three act structure, the first act, we'll go over this again. The first act is you introduce the characters, right? Uh, then you introduce the problem, the obstacle that they have to overcome. Now that could be a person, you know, they say there's only three stories, man versus man. So that's a villain kind of thing, uh, man versus society. So that's the, the, your main character is, is battling, uh, uh, say the, the judicial system, um, or man versus himself. So it might be, you know, about a guy who's trying to overcome addiction something like that. So those are your three sort of basic stories. And in that first act, you're introducing that problem. You're introducing all the characters. And then at the end of this, the first act, you know, you're, you're kind of at this point where it's like, you know, what are we going to do here? Um, you, you, you've got all these hurdles. Now what? So then starts the second act. And in the second act, the character should probably try to solve the problem and fail. Um, and uh, uh, in failing, creating even more problems. And the, and the problem just should get bigger. And in a novel, we have more time to kind of explore different avenues of the work. So you can um, add other characters who help that character along. Sometimes you can add characters who are or like your, like your protagonist and show, uh, how your protagonist's path could change. And, you know, so for instance, if you got a guy who's trying to recover from addiction, addiction, you could show a character who tried to recover from addiction, but failed. And he's, he's in a really dark place and maybe dies. And, and that could be a, sort of a signal to your audience. Like, well, this is his fate. If he does not overcome this which is a very strong narrative device 
in order to show what your character is up against. Um, because you do want to make it clear that your character can fail. Uh, whether your character's, where it's going to be a happy ending or not, you need to give the audience a sense, I believe, that it could have happened a different way. That, that to me, what, is what really makes a full world. Uh, the problem, I think, a lot of uh, rookie writers and even a lot of seasoned writers get into, they get tunnel vision. They, they, they fall in love with a character and a plot and they strictly stick to that and they don't explore the other sides. Now you have to get, you have to worry about exploring all the little, little alleyways because you can get stuck in one and go really off on a tangent. You don't want to do that, but you need to keep giving them the sense that there's a wider world out there, that there's stuff going on even around this character as he's going through whatever he's going through. So especially in a world building sense, one of the things I always pointed to in Star Wars was the cantina scene because the guy who confronts Luke says, I have the death system, uh, the death sentence in 12 systems. And that's a great scene because this guy comes out of nowhere. He's implying there are 12 other systems with judicial systems who are after him. So it implies this bigger universe outside the cantina, outside the empire. Um, so... That's, that's the kind of line that can really open up your world. If you fail to have those kinds of characters and it's just about, and you're constantly just talking about the main character over and over again, uh, that's a problem. You know, if you're, if you're constantly, if you're doing a story about a guy who robs a bank and we never hear about, you know, some of the other crimes he committed or or some of the other places he's been, maybe some of the other jobs he had before he had to rob this bank, you know, it, he feels small. He feels, you know, especially if it's a character that's been in jail. Like, people who have been in jail, they've been in jail with a lot of different people. And uh, they've probably been in jail in different places in the country. So that's an opportunity to expand upon that character, how he acted in those situations, what kind of person he is, and uh, to, to give us that sort of roadmap of who he is and how this is all going to play out. Whether he's sort of a doomed sort of character who's never going never gonna, to uh, overcome this demon or whatever it is that's, that's, that's hurting him. Or whether he is capable of, in the past, he had overcome stuff and now he's overcoming, he's going to overcome it again because he's always had that inside him. Um, you know, or maybe came close and then, and, and then, you know, through no fault of his own, failed. So the three-act structure, I think... Oh, uh, let me finish the three-act structure. I didn't finish it. I got, got off on a tangent. So the second act, things get worse. The third act is where we have the climax of the story. So we get into it, things get really bad. The end of the second act, things are just look very dark. Uh, for your protagonist, it looks like, and you got to figure out a way they could fail. So you can imply at least that's what you want to imply very strongly to your reader that, oh, he's going to fail because that, that'll be a great ending when he succeeds. So you want to, you want to give them the ability to look down the road and go, oh, is he going to fail? Um, so when he overcomes his obstacle, it's like, ah, he overcame. And, you know, it gets it gets very exciting if it's more of a surprise. Um, and vice versa, right? Uh, you want to you wanna signal that he is going to overcome if maybe he's not. If you're planning for the ending to be sort of dark, like, ah, he can't overcome this. And uh, there's everything in between. But you want to give the sense that there's a wider world or, a, or potential for these various avenues. So when you get to your third act and you actually have the climax, the final confrontation or, you know, the final epic battle or whatever it is, um, you know, your audience is invested like, oh, this could come out a lot of different ways. Then, you know, you have the battle and with, with the, the climactic ending, you can then have the fallout from that and what's known as the denouement. The denouement is the sort of conclusion. And um, it kind of depends on your, you know, your novel or your story. But, you know, you want to have sort of a wrap up with the characters. What happened to them? Did they move on? Did they get the girl? Did they, did, did the villain get vanquished and go to jail? And um, 
So that 3x structure can really help you. It gives you an idea of pages. Now don't don't use it as sort of a uh, you know don't don't let it chain you down. You know you can you can sort of not totally listen to it, especially in a novel. But use it as a guide, I would say. Uh, and I, I and I think you know screenwriters and screenwriting can uh, can help you facilitate that. Anyhow, that's my screenwriting tip today. Check out my books, Woke a Stand a Novel, uh, ebook trade paperback, Kindle Unlimited is free, and also The Pineys, books one, two, three, and four, all available at Amazon.com. We'll see you next time.